Hi everybody. In this video, I'll show you how to create the horizontal line shading that you often see on vintage maps. Here's an example of this effect. Sarah Bell has an excellent tutorial for creating halftone dot and concentric line shading patterns, but those techniques won't work for the horizontal lines effect. I encourage you to check out her channel on YouTube and also sarahbellmaps.com. I've come up with a technique that uses both Illustrator and Photoshop. It's not very elegant, but it works. Here are the steps. I've created a simple world map in QGIS using natural earth data. It's important to use an oceans layer for this technique, so don't forget to add that to your map. Also, be sure to add the land layer. Export the file as an SVG, then open this in Illustrator. Here I've turned off the rivers, lakes, and graticules layer for now. To add to my vintage effect, I'll change some of the colors of the map. White for the land layer, and EDE8E6 for the oceans. I'll do the rest of the styling later. That's all we need to do at this point. Next, we need to create an illustrator file with horizontal lines. These lines will give us the halftone effect. This technique is highly sensitive to the variables you use, especially the lines. Changing any of these variables will produce different results. I encourage you to experiment with this. There are two ways to create the lines. I'll go through both of them. Method 1. Create a new Illustrator document that's at least as big as your map. I usually use a tabloid page size for this step to make sure my lines completely cover the map. Make sure it's in landscape orientation. Using the pen or line segment tool, draw a horizontal line across the page. Set this to a one point black stroke with no fill and move it to the top of the page. Line weight is the first variable in this process. Zoom in close and option drag the line downwards so that the gap in between the lines is a little bigger than the line thickness. The size of the gap is the second variable. Use the transform again command, which is command D on the Mac and control D on Windows to repeat this. Keep holding down these keys until the lines go to the bottom of the page. Select the lines and group them. Your lines are now ready to use. Method 2. This method gives you more flexibility over the line spacing and weight, making it a lot easier to experiment with different settings. First, I'll repeat the first two steps from method 1. I'll draw a one point line across the top of the page. I'll option drag the line down to the bottom of the page to create a copy. Select both lines and go to Object Blend Blend Options. Set spacing to specified steps and the number to about 200 to start. Click OK. Now go back to Object Blend Make to create the blend. It should look something like this. Your blend will probably have too many or too few lines at first. That's the beauty of this method. The blend is still live, so changing the number of steps will update the effect without starting over. Just go back to Object, Blend, Blend Options, and change the number of steps until you get the gap spacing you want. Here's what I get with a setting of 200 steps. The gap is too big, so I'll increase the steps to 300. Here's how that looks. That's much better. I'll select all and group. Remember that this works best when the gap is a bit bigger than the stroke weight, but try different things to see what happens. You can also change the stroke weight with this method and the blend will be updated automatically. Just change the weight of the top and bottom strokes. Your lines are now ready to use. Creating the halftone effect. Now that we have our lines, we can get down to business. The first step is to prep the map for this effect. Only two of the map layers are relevant for this technique, the ocean and the land layers. If you forgot to add the land layer in QGIS, just duplicate the countries layer, select the layer, and click the Unite Pathfinder button, then set the stroke to None. We need to get the ocean and land layers into Photoshop. Turn off and lock the other layers, lakes, rivers, etc., so only the land and ocean layers are visible. Go to File, Export, Export As. Select Photoshop Format and save the file. In the Export Options window, select Grayscale, High Resolution, 
and check the right layers and maximum editability boxes, then click OK. Switch to Photoshop and open the file you just created. In the Layers panel, double click on the Ocean layer to open the Layer Style window. Check the box for Inner Glow. Select a dark gray for the color and set the opacity around 40 to 50%. Set the size to about 50 to start and adjust as needed to create the glow effect. Here's what that looks like. Go back to Illustrator and select and copy the lines. Go back to Photoshop now, paste, and choose Smart Object. The lines need to cover the entire map, so scale them if they don't. Make sure to hold down the Shift key to scale them proportionately, then press Return to set the layer. With the lines layer selected, apply a slight Gaussian blur. Two to three pixels is a good place to start. Blur is the third variable in this process. The amount of blur has a big effect on the final result, so experiment with different values. Next, add a threshold adjustment layer to the top of your layer stack. At first, it will look like this. Adjust the slider until you get something like this. The lines should taper down in size as they extend into the water area. Once you're satisfied, flatten the file and save it as a PSD. Now go back to Illustrator and open the PSD file you just saved. Select the file and open the Image Trace panel. For the preset, I start with black and white logo. Try other presets and settings if you like. Here's a close-up of the settings I used. Make sure you check the box for Ignore White. This leaves the white areas empty instead of filling them with white shapes. If you have the Preview box selected, the image is traced automatically. Otherwise, click the Trace button. Once that's done, expand the image by going to Object, Expand. Check both the Object and Fill boxes and click OK. Your image should look like this. Select All and Group. With it still selected, copy. Switch to your map file and create a new layer, then move this layer just above the ocean layer and paste. Make sure that the Paste Remembers Layers setting is off. It will look like this. Zoom in and move the halftone layer until it's correctly aligned with the map. It helps to go to View Hide Edges for this step. Here's everything aligned. And here's a close up. You can see that the lines are sort of triangle shaped. Since the lines are a vector layer, you can easily change their color or opacity as desired. And that's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.